Hello there. It's Wednesday. Yes, it is. The wonderful world of Wednesday. It is a wonderful world. Yes. Oh, I forgot. I may have. I may lose connection again because we're outside. Mm -hmm. If we do, I'll change it. I should have done that first. But I wonder if I should do that now. But it'll be quick. But anyways, it's funny. You can either choose to look at our front, or in here, you can look at our back. <laughs> So whichever view you like better, it's all yours to choose. <clears throat> well, today, well, let me just do my um, invites. Today is Luke 5, and we honestly are keeping this one kind of short today, and kind of all throughout Luke, just because they are pretty long. But <clears throat> just highlighting some things in the chapters, and then that way you guys can pick up, you know, the different parts of it. Um, but to try and keep it close to the five, you know, ten, five to ten minute mark, um, we're trying to do it that way. So, mm hope -hmm. you like this format. But look at our back or look at our front. <laughs> I think the back looks better sometimes. But anyways, um, so today I was focusing on the part where Jesus heals the paralytic man. And we've heard this story before because as you remember, um, there was tons of people there. They all wanted to see Jesus. Um, and they actually, this guy was a paralytic. And so they actually went on top of one of those roofs and removed all the tiles and dropped him down through the roof so he could see uh, Jesus. So that's amazing and some pretty strong faith that they wanted to see Jesus that badly. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Mom. Thanks for joining. But so that was kind of neat. But what's neat to point out about that is when Jesus heals him, he doesn't heal his par paralysis first. He heals his sins first. He, for, he's, he takes his sins away. And I think that's neat because that was the most important thing. Not his body outward stuff. It was his inward heart stuff. Which is what the theme is in all these books we keep reading is that what matters is what's on the inside. And so I thought it was neat to point out that he heals his, his he takes away his sins first before healing his body. Cool. So I thought that was a really neat thing to point out. <clears throat> the other neat thing about that, by doing that, only um, by saying, when Jesus said, you know, your sins are forgiven, the Pharisees went in an uproar because only God could do that. And which would be blasphemy but Jesus is God so it's not blasphemy and so then Jesus is like well what's easier for you to believe that the guy can get up and walk or forgive sins and so he's like get up take your blanket and walk and he did huh. and so he healed him then but what's interesting too with that is that so the Pharisees at that point would have to know that he was a true deity and part in God because he made the guy walk whenever it so they a lot of times back then, whenever their gods were doing something or um, healing, they had to prepare and plan, and it was at a certain time. So this was just out of the blue. Jesus healed him and cured him and did a miracle out of the blue. It wasn't planned. And so um, it was totally obvious that Jesus is God and that he was a deity. <clears throat> and but the sad part is the Pharisees, there wouldn't be any um, need to go on after that. They should have stopped and believed, and then we could all live happily. <laughs> but unfortunately, their hearts were hardened, and they don't believe that that is uh, the facts, even though it was right in front of their eyes. And so then they, they get more upset, and that's when they start going after Jesus even more. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of sad for that part of it. But I thought it was really interesting that just that fact alone would prove that he was a deity, and they couldn't deny that. Yeah. So instead of accepting it, they had to go the other way because they were blind. Yeah. So. They want to do their own agenda. Yes. I mean, they thought, well, they didn't want to lose their, their power and prestige mm -hmm. and their yeah. proper, what they thought was the way. Yeah. So it was. And then the next part of that, that was just when um, they're, they're trying to point out that um, Jesus is, you know, he's eating with the tax collectors and they're eating and drinking and that no one's fasting. And the Pharisees are upset about that because they're like, no one's fasting in your group. And he's like, why would they be fasting? I'm here, you know. Um, they don't, you know, you don't fast at a wedding, you know, with the bridegrooms there at a wedding, you eat. And so there was no need to fast at the time. So I thought that was cool. And then, of course, I love that Jesus sits and eats with the, the I don't say the lowly because they're not lowly, but in the Pharisees' eyes, they were the lowly of the world, yeah. the um, tax collectors and stuff. And um, what is also neat is Matthew, which um, well, I think is Levi in there, he was a tax collector. And Jesus is like, come on, let's go. And he goes, okay, and follows him. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. So anyways, really cool. yeah. yeah, so that's tonight's talk. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you tomorrow, Thursday, for Matthew 6. That's right. So I hope you liked our back view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that right there is all our cleaning supplies, so when groceries come, 
we clean everything <laughs> before we bring it in the house. That's right. So, anyways, love you guys. Have a good evening. We'll see you. Okay, bye. bye.